from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I am a golden god! Yeah! Yeah! I am a golden god! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's 1-800-5-800-866. Anything can happen here. Anything at all. Teresa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Um, you talked to uh, your guy, right, about me? My guy? The one that I call. Oh, Dean? Yes. Well, let's call Dean in here for a second. Dean? Dean. Have a seat. Blow this. All right, so I uh, pick up the phone. Okay. I pick up the No, I'm talking to Dean here, Teresa. Hang on a second. Oh, All right, so I... Um, I pick up the phone, and uh, I pick up Teresa on the line, Yep. and she says, you talked to your guy about me, didn't you? Well, of course, I have not talked to you, No. Nope. because uh, uh, you screened the call, and then you put it through to me, and then I, I talked to the caller, but uh, now I have to find out from you, what did you two talk about? Well, I think Teresa is unaware of talk radio etiquette, so she doesn't realize that she doesn't need to discuss what we discussed prior to her speaking to you, but unfortunately, she threw me right under the bus. But uh, Teresa is a formerly deaf person who got an implant uh, in her ear, and she can now hear. Yes. Her numbers now, uh, as far as her body and so forth, are pretty good. She's a 32C, she's five foot nine and 120 pounds. Those numbers are pretty good. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's a solid uh, lineup right there. And uh, she's looking just to bang around, but she feels that her her speech impediment, because she was once completely deaf, she feels that uh, it hurts her chances of banging around. So, now, did you tell her that uh, fact is that uh, you know, my dream girl would be a deaf mute? That would be my dream girl. She finally called in, and she throws me under the bus. The, the Helen Keller has called in. Here she is, and she blew it. I figured we might give her a pass this time, because it's... Too, too much well, of a hasn't blown it yet. <sighs> Teresa, talk radio etiquette means you never say, oh, I was just telling your screener uh, all about this. I'm sure he told you because the host doesn't know anything about what we talked about. I just, I just wanted to say that because I, I wasn't sure if um, you may have told him that I was deaf. I did not want him to hang up on me because... I've called Dr. Laura before and other people like that, and they really? just hang up on me because they think I'm... Go ahead. On our show, the normal calls do sound like crank calls. Oh, okay. Well, do you want me to just get on with my problem? All right, well, get on with your problem. Okay. Dean, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, so Dean updated. Yes, Dean now has told me what you two talked about. Yeah. So I, I go out with my girlfriends a lot because I, I'm normal looking, and guys will come up to me and... They'll start talking to me because I've heard that I'm pretty good looking, but then once I start talking, they just, like, walk away. And I've only, I, I don't think, I think that they're turned off by my voice, but there's nothing I can do about it, you know? My God, they should be, uh, they should be thrilled. Why? Oh, because, let's face it, uh, I imagine... That unlike the uh, the other friends you have, you're probably a little shyer, a little quieter. In some ways, I mean, I'm very confident with myself. Really? But uh, just once I start talking to guys, it's all good until we start talking. It's just like normally when we go out, it's really loud, so they can't really tell that 
there's a problem, but then once you start talking to me a lot, you can sense that there's something going on with me, and I think they may think I have some sort of other problem, not ne not that I'm deaf, but they might think that Like you're one of Jerry's kids or something? Yeah, maybe, yeah. And I just need your advice on what I can do to improve it. Like, not my voice, but just maybe something with my looks I can do to make them not care about my voice, or... Well, certainly dressing as sexy as you can. Uh, the guys won't hear what you're saying anyway. Yeah, I, I think I dress pretty sexy, but... Yeah, and do you let them know, like, like what you're out for, you know? You're just out for a good yeah. time? I'm not ready for a serious relationship. I, I mean, I'm young, and I want to have fun, you know? Yeah. And it's just, I feel like I can't sometimes. Now, uh, how many guys have you been with? I've had two serious relationships, and I've had a lot of just hookups, you know, not anything serious. In how many hookups? Hmm, I'd say since the year started, about six. Six hookups this year alone? Yeah, that's pretty good, but... There we go. It's normally no talking, it's just, you know, and... Perfect. I'm, I don't know. It's just it, I kind That's of the way I like it. Well, I want someone to talk to also. Well, I understand that, but you got to understand that the guys, if you look, if you want hookups, yes, I want well, the guys only care about the hookup. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, if you want someone to talk to, well, there's no guarantee of that after a hookup that a guy want to talk to you, even if you 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 had perfect speech. Oh. Well, then why do all my girlfriends have their serious boyfriends? One of them's engaged. Well, is that what you want? You just said you're not ready for that. Not yet. I don't want to marry that this early because I know people get divorced, and I don't want to get pregnant yet, and I don't want to go through all that. I just right. want to be hooking up with people. Well, then you, you, since you're not ready for that anyway, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, well, that's... I guess that'll work then. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bob, believe me, if a guy knows he's getting sex, mm -hmm. he can overlook a lot of things. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, are you kidding? That's, that's how guys find out, you know, that a girl who's six foot two and has bigger hands than he does <laughs> probably used to be a man, and they just kind of overlook that. What'd you uh, say? They overlook it. Later mm -hmm. on, they figure out the truth, and then they're horrified, but they overlook stuff. I mean, guys get into these situations all the time. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to me and not hanging up on me because I've, tr I've honestly tried to talk to Dr. Laura about this. Like I want to talk to uh, everybody Dr. Laura has ever hung up on. Uh, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We already had Bill Balance on the show many years ago. I want to talk to everybody she's ever hung up with. Uh, so I'm not alone? Uh, oh, no. No, okay. no. You're not alone. Okay. You're not alone. No, absolutely not. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank uh, darling, anytime you want to come down here for an evaluation, we'll be happy to check you out. Okay. Really? I'll keep in touch. No, no. I mean, we'll have you come down and we'll evaluate you here in person. Oh, okay. Does, no that, does that work for you? Yeah. Very nice. Ever tried to call Rush Limbaugh? Do you want me to try it? Did you ever try? No, 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 no. I wonder if they would. I wonder if they would hang up on you. <laughs> Probably. Well, Rush, Rush had the same uh, same surgery you had. You did? You didn't know that? Uh-uh. Oh, yes. No, I didn't know that. Well, I don't like what he talks about at all, so I don't think I'd be calling him anyways. Well, uh, it would just be interesting if they hung up on you. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it one time. It would just, just because, you know, Rush had the same exact issue. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Well, he was, uh, he was dipping into the oxy. <laughs> okay, well, I will well, let you Well, hang on. Dean, Dean is going to set up an evaluation. We're going to get you down here for an evaluation. Okay. I right, hang on. Get her down here. She doesn't have to say a word. Step it up. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Dean writes on the screen. See, I told you she wasn't a prank. You know, when they call in and they say, "I'm not a prank." Dean, by the way, did come in during the break and say that this call's not a prank. She said, I'm not a prank. Well, how many years has Dean been doing this? I mean, seriously. But the first the first time to suspect somebody is being a prank is when they go, hey, by the way, don't hang up on me. I'm not a prank. Dude, she said she's not a prank. Every time I had a prank call, I would say that. 
No, I just want you to know I'm really serious, okay? I was born with one eye. I'm like the Cyclops. I, I just don't want you to hang up on me. I'm not a prank. One eye right in the middle of my head. Did you see Monsters, Inc.? That character is modeled after me. That's right. Have you seen Yo Gabba Gabba? That character, that's me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones here. It's Stacy. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, how are you? Doing great. <laughs> have a good afternoon. Um, well, I have a situation, and I would like to ask your opinion. Um, my husband, I've been married to basically for four years, and I love him. I have two beautiful children with him. Um, he has a, he's been doing this since he was a teenager. Late at night, I'll wake up, he's not there. Well, I go to the office where our computers are, and he's looking at naked women uh, satisfying himself. Yeah. So it's I've kind done of that. Yeah, it's kind of disturbing to most women and me, but I have I don't know what to do. I mean, Wait, but Donning, did you marry him before he was a teenager? Yeah, I mean, no. So no, you married him at twelve. I <laughs> I guess you can kind of say that. I married him when he was 37. 37? Mm-hmm. How old is he now? He's 40. So when you married him, he was already doing this? Yes. And you accepted me. it? Yes. You didn't say to him, well, I'm not going to marry a guy who's up late at night pleasuring himself. You didn't say that? No. Okay. No. So, so why did you accept that? <clears throat> you know, maybe I thought... Things have changed, but no, you know, I didn't think it was Things never change. No, but no, no, things don't change. Yeah, you're true. That's true. This is something guys do. Yeah. So, so what should I do? Should I like join in and like gratify him? Depends. Or it depends. Just, it depends on whether he's into that. He, you know, sometimes we are laying in bed and he'll watch <clears throat> pardon me, um, pornography, and I will help him. You know, help him watch or help him. Enjoy it. Gratify himself. I see. Yes. Right. But sometimes it bugs me. Should I, you know? Why does it, it bug you? I don't know, because I guess I have a low self-esteem about myself. Oh. As you can say. I, I am a, a pretty good looker. As he says, I'm, you know, everybody's all, I, I'm gorgeous. I'm blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm 5'3". I mean, I'm built very By nice the way, I've got 10 porn channels at home. Ten. Well, you sound adorable anyway, so... Well, no, but, no, but here's the thing. They, they come with the package. I, I get this direct TV package where I've got all the pay channels thrown in. Yeah. It's a, it's a very expensive package I have. So there's a total of ten different porn channels. Yeah. And you want to know something? After watching them many, many times, mm -hmm. most of the chicks in there are not that hot. And that's what he tells me. He says, do not be concerned the girls aren't what they look like on TV. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about what they are on TV. Oh, they are hot. And the chick's covered in tats and all these weird piercings. And, you know, they look like they got more than 100,000 miles on the odometer. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know why you would worry about that. I don't know. Maybe it's just because my You think he's in love? He's in love. Yes, he is. He, he love loves Jenna family. Jameson. He's in love. <laughs> hey, yeah. He can Come almost on. name every porn star there is out there. <laughs> no, but the thing is, that was true when you married him. Uh, this is yeah. something I don't understand about women. Why do you marry a guy and then expect that a basic component of his personality is going to change automatically merely because you've appeared on the scene? Yeah, this is true. We do we we do accept, think that. Why? I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Maybe because of, like, you know, how we have it in our subcranium, how family life should be. You know, after you have kids and stuff, everybody should change for the children. No, but the, like the point is, if that's what you want, you have to say, all right, look, pal, uh, I'm not going to live in a house with porn. So if you're going to continue doing porn, uh, I'm going to say no to your proposal. That's, yes. that's when you have that conversation. But women don't do that. They just assume the guy is automatically going to know and evolve. Uh -huh. We don't evolve. If we smoke weed, we're going to smoke weed. Yeah. If, if we eat uh, double $6 burgers at Carl's Jr., we're going to eat double $6 burgers. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if we uh, have friends who are slimy or they like to drink or they like to stay out late, <laughs> that's who our friends are. Yeah. Do you think that suddenly we're going to join the PTA and suddenly become the the best neighbors on the cul-de-sac? Yeah, I can understand your point. Why would you think that? I don't know, just in our subcreating, how we're designed, I guess. Uh, well, you are being unrealistic. This, this is true. This is, you got the guy you married. He didn't lie to you. He didn't misrepresent. You know, when when you got with him, you knew he was into porn. Yes. And then after he married you, he was into porn. Yes. So the person uh, the, who uh, is mistaken here is you. Yeah. You know, it would be one thing if he said to you, oh, no, I hate porn. And then later on you find out he's, you know, it's like the Library of Congress. He's got every porno video ever made. You, you know that you're exactly right. I should accept him for being truthful and honest with me when we first started dating and to accept for who he is and not expect him to change automatically. I mean, how many guys out there right now have taken a copy of Maxim or FHM or uh, even Playboy and hidden it when women are coming over? Um, I don't know, really. But, but your husband actually let you know he was into porn. Yes, this is true. And and you you chose to marry him. Yes. A 37-year-old man. He's 40 now. But he was 37 when you married. Yes. And he was honest. Yes. And what you saw was what you got. Yes. You know how many women, what they saw is not what they got? Guys lying about what they uh, do for a living, how much money they make. Yes. Guys, guys lying about uh, who they are and what they do and what they have. Mm -hmm. Guys lying about being into porn or not being into porn. Mm -hmm. Guys who say, oh, no, I smoked weed in high school, but I haven't done it since. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've got like a treasure trove of pot stashed away somewhere. Yep. I mean, your husband told you who he was. Yep, that's true. Well, and he's no more and no less. Yep. You know, you're lucky to have a guy who is honest with you. You're right. And you're exactly 100% right on that. So you're nitpicking. Yeah, it's your you own. Say that. It's your own self-esteem issue, and you know why they call it self-esteem, dear? Because because it comes from yourself. Exactly, it is your issue to deal with. Yeah. If you don't think you look hot enough, make yourself look hotter. Yes, this is true. I should I should work on myself and my self-esteem, and not worry about what he looks at. The answer is go to the gym, not make him give up porn. <laughs> That's true, sir. Okay. Well, Step it up, dear. 1 800 5800 Toms. 1 800 5800 866. Like this. I couldn't stand you, Tom, before, and I apologize. And now, you know, I can call up a girl right now, make plans to meet with her tonight, do what I gotta do, and leave. You know, why not just do this before? The Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likas Show, wide open telephones at 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Little oh, baby. I can't wait to take this call. Can't wait. Jim? Yes, sir. Here we are. Hi, how are you doing, Mr. Likas? Um, my name is Jim. I'm 25 years old, and the only person that I could think of. Um, to ask for advice was you. Um, I'm in a bit of a situation right now. Um, I've, I'm married. I've been married for going on two years now. My, my wife just had a baby. The baby's 23 days old, and uh, we've been bickering a lot. And how, how long have you been a listener? I've been a listener for, I'd say, about uh, two or three months. Two or three months. Okay. So you have an idea of what I think about getting married at that age? No, no, I totally agree, and I wish I would have ran into you earlier in life. Or having a baby at that age? And th this is why I have that opinion. You are Exhibit A. This is the kind of thing that happens a lot to people who are in a rush to get married and have a baby. Like you. Yep. And may I ask why you were in such a rush to do this? Well, I'd say 
old-fashioned values from parents and getting married young and whatnot. My parents are really antiquated. Her parents are really antiquated. It seems it seemed like the situation would fit, but you understand though that um, your parents got married before MySpace, Facebook, cell phones, text messaging, websites. No, I totally agree, and I've I've had. I've, I wanted to call in and, and let you know, and I wanted to call in before and let you know and let your listeners know that if I would have known about you and your train of thought and the way the way you treat things, I would have never gotten married. Hey, here's something I have said, and my quote has been copped by a variety of people. People are only as faithful as their options. And thanks to technology uh, today in 2008... People have way more options than they had when your parents got married. Yeah. Way more. And so they uh, get bored easily in marriages, and they uh, they have high expectations that are never met. And so they move on with their lives. Yeah. And the, the, the idea of having a long-term marriage is, is almost a joke now. Yeah. Right? Definitely. I mean, like I said before, if I would have if I would have known about Lycus 101, I'd probably be in a different situation right now. I'd probably be backpacking in Europe or something. Instead now, of, uh, is she still there? Yeah, she's still here. But why is she still there? Oh, well, she's she's at she's at uh, she's at work, and I'm at work. But today the situation arose, and she she made the comment that she was going to go stay at a relative's house. But what was her reason for not wanting to be there anymore? It's been a lot of biting. There's been just like a lot of bickering between us. About what? About about like situations between her and my my parents and how my parents seem to try to tell her what to do about the baby and this and that. And I mean, they're just giving advice because a she's young, b this is her first baby. I mean, if 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 I was getting into a situation where it's my first time on something, I'd take as much I'd take as much advice as I could get. But she seems like they're talking down to her. I mean, it's it's something so insignificant that they blow out of proportion. But the reality is, she's too young and immature to be married. Exactly. And exactly. and you, because your parents were born in another era, uh, because your parents got married and stayed married for a long time and got married young and had kids young, uh, you thought, without thinking about the world around you, that, uh, well, you'll just find somebody and do the same thing. And we went through the whole typical Mexican big style wedding, and now I mean, come. Are, are you are you Mexican? Yes, sir. And is she Mexican? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, now she's uh, she's fed up. So yeah, so she's trying to bail, and what I'm trying to find out is, hey, what what steps could I take? Or like, let's say for example, she wants to leave, and I don't want her to leave because she's going to leave with my baby. So what can I do so she doesn't leave with my baby? Hire a lawyer. Okay. That's what you do. You can't stop somebody from leaving. Mm -hmm. You can't. Well, I can stop them from taking my baby, right? Well, with a lawyer. With a lawyer. With a lawyer. So let's say she you don't off. stop them by keeping the door closed with your fist. Uh, you don't stop them by uh, threatening them. You don't stop them by pulling out a gun. You don't stop them by uh, by by screaming at them. You stop them with an attorney. Okay, definitely. And unfortunately, uh, many times people uh, try to cheap out and don't hire an attorney, and then they find out the hard way. Mm -hmm. Does that no, make no. sense? No, that's why I'm calling you. So I mean, you I need an attorney. Okay. And, and by the way, here in L.A., it's still not the end of the business day. I'd call now. Do you have an attorney? No, I don't. You've never used an attorney for any purpose? Never had a car accident? Never had to uh, use an attorney for to go after an insurance company wouldn't pay or anything like that. Any, any advice? I've always used my my uh, my dad's people. I, I use my dad's CPA. I use yeah. my dad's uh, my dad's uh, lawyer. I mean, he's well, a lawyer. check I'll, with I'll your dad's him. lawyer. Yes, and see who he would recommend as a divorce attorney. By all means, but I mean, I'd make that call as soon as you hang up on me. Okay. Do not wait until Monday. Good deal. Okay. All right. All right. Well, th 
thank you very much for your help and for all you young cats listening. Listen to Father Tom here because look at me. Look at the situation that I'm in on a Friday afternoon. I mean, I woke up to I woke up this morning. I'm taking care of both of my uh, small businesses that I'm trying to get off the ground, and uh, instead of focusing on on the future of and the farewell of my child, I'm trying to keep my wife from taking them. So, all you listeners, listen to Father Tom here, man. All right. Well, good luck on that, Jim. Thank you for the call. It's just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas Show here at 1-800-5800-TOM. And we continue with the phone calls here. Uh, it's wide open telephones on this Friday. Let's say hello here to uh, Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's happening, Dad? Not much, son. So I got to tell you, I really love listening to your show, but this week one of your topics really pissed me off, and I just felt I had to call today. The professor who was suing everybody. Yes. What ever happened to accountability and responsibility? I don't know. You'd have to ask AIG. You'd have to ask Lehman Brothers. Uh, you'd have to ask uh, all the companies with the mortgages that the government is going to take your taxpayer money and wipe off the books. Uh, that's the kind of country we live in. Yeah, I, t I tell you, it's, it's crazy. You know, the guy talked about how doing what he does helps actually bring down prices and things like that. He talked about the salads, and, you know, I liked your comment about that, how he wasn't really sure what the facts on that. But, you know, I think that it's actually driving up the cost of everything else because everyone has to protect themselves with lawyers. Corporations are getting sued left and right. You know, what about that lady that spilled the coffee in her lap and sued McDonald's? No, you know, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah, I tell you. Um... Like I said, it just pissed me off hearing that guy, and, you know, I really wish that there was a way to sue people like that back, you know, and make them, uh, you know, if they recover any type of uh, settlement, that they have to pay it themselves or something. I mean, it's ridiculous. Look, the, the, in the 1940s, uh, the cigarette companies engaged in some outrageous behavior, and I've seen it. In the 1940s, um, various cigarette companies used to claim that smoking their particular brand of cigarettes was healthy. Doctors agree that Chesterfield is healthy. More doctors smoke Chesterfield. I, I, I see these ads. If you go back in time and look at some of these ads in the archives, uh, they used to have ads with, like, um, Ted Williams. Ted Williams, you know, you know, who's an athlete. Ted Williams tells you his favorite brand of cigarettes. Practically saying they're on his training table, you know. Now... That kind of stuff was outrageous because at the time, the Surgeon General report, the uh, Surgeon General's report of 1964 that told us that uh, smoking causes lung cancer had not even come out yet. And so many people were lulled into thinking they were doing something healthy for themselves by smoking a cigarette. And it was anything but. But the thing is that we know, we know fried chicken is not healthy for you. And we know eating hamburgers seven days a week is not good for you, too. But <laughs> that is not the fault of the company that makes something so delicious and so irresistible you want to eat it every day. It's your job, it's your responsibility to moderate your behavior, not the job of the company. Unless they're putting heroin or cocaine in those hamburgers, <laughs> I mean, all they're doing is making a good product that people love at a price they can't resist then it's up to you to moderate yourself. You know, even our government's getting in on it. I'm sure you probably heard about the moratorium in South Central L.A. where they wanted to ban Oh, it yes, we talked about that. It's being built. Yes, which, by the way, only benefits the existing fast food places because now there'll be less competition. Yeah, they make it unfair to do business and at the same time control other businesses and prevent you from, you know, if you want to open a business like that, under, you know, the freedom that we have in America, they're actually blocking stuff. Right. No, I totally agree with you. Anyhow, I just had to spell that in because, like I said, you always have great topics. Um, I called before a couple years ago, and we had a great talk then, and um, I haven't called lately, but I decided to because I just wanted to voice that and let everybody know that I think it's ridiculous. And if there's any way that we could fight it, we should. Robert, you make a lot of good points. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, bottom line is, you're anti-marriage, pro-slut. Yeah, and, and most uh, guys are. The Tom Likey Show. 
from Hollywood. It's Tom Likas at one 800 800 tom You bet that's our telephone number. Yes, it is. Anything goes here. Lindsay on the Tom yes. Likas Show. Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm great. Well, that's good. So let me tell you about my boyfriend. Yeah, this is 18-year-old Lindsay, and she wants to talk about her boyfriend. <laughs> well, we've been together for about eight months now. And um, we got together in February. I moved back to finish my high school. and uh, Back where? My mom. To California. We're from Ohio. You're from Ohio? Yes. And you were in Ohio, and you met your boyfriend in Ohio? Yes, I did. And then you moved to Los Angeles. Why? No, actually, I live in Temecula. I live here. I came back to finish my senior year of high school. You live in Temecula, in so you're not that attractive. Okay. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> well, darling, further you live from the ocean. Oh, I'm like 30 minutes away. I'm there all the time. You know the formula. Further <laughs> you live from the ocean, the fatter and less attractive you are. It's the way it is. <laughs> okay. Right? I mean, come on. That could be true, yeah. Hot chicks live in cities whose last name is Beach. <laughs> Huntington Beach, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And who lives in Hammett? What? Who lives in Hammett? Women built like a Hammett. I have never even been to Hammett, actually. You're in Temecula. It's not far away. Well, I've never been there. All right. Well, look around Temecula. It's kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I moved back here, and I'm finishing my senior year of high school. When we got together, the two things I didn't want him doing were cheating on me and using cocaine. The two. So those are the two things you didn't want him do. Yeah. So, in other words, he has a track record of doing those things. Um, no, actually, he's never cheated on the girl, but that's kind of our golden rule in, the, in a relationship. You know, oh. you don't cheat on the person you're with. Mm. And what about cocaine? Um, he had done it. He experimented with it over his birthday, and he said, oh, that's not a problem. I won't do it again. And I said, okay. And um, since we've been here in California, he moved out here about a month after I did to continue our relationship, and... In the past few weeks, actually, he's done it about four times. Well, so you, you already know that he's done that. Uh, uh, what, what, what is your question? Well, what do you think? Should I leave him? Because I told him I would if he did it. Darling, you're too it. young. Uh, darling, first of all, you're too young to have a relationship. And these are the kinds of immature things people do when they're 18 and they're in love. Well, he's 20. Ooh, 20. Yeah. <laughs> 20's not very mature either, darling. <laughs> I mean, being 20 is great. Effing around, having fun, living it up. I Believe me, I, I'm a big supporter. I'm a big fan. But uh, having a serious relationship, no. Yeah, well, he... Okay, he's never been in a relationship for less than two years. His ex-girlfriend, actually, she is written on his back in ink. And they're together for so, two and a half So you years. guys are like trailer trash, white trash from Ohio? I see. I'm starting to understand now. And now you're part of the trailer trash of Temecula, right? Oh, my gosh. What a way to look at it. That's how it is. <laughs> so, you, okay, well, what would you advise me to? Would you advise me to leave him, or do you think... By I the way, you guys are not just white. You are super white. You're like Casper the Friendly Ghost white, right? Oh, actually, probably. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. There we go. <laughs> and so you, wait a minute, his ex-girlfriend is on his back in ink? Oh, yes. Nice and, little tattoo. Well, darling, uh, you chose this guy, not me. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, you you looked at this guy's back and you saw love. Well, he hasn't done anything to get back with her. I mean, he is down with her. She, lives, she actually lives in Ohio. He's 3,000 miles away from her. I know he doesn't have any interest in her. Jesus it's just, Christ. you know, I don't know whether or not I should actually oh, believe him anymore because he's lied to me so many times about using Coke and oh, with his voice myself. and stuff. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to believe him. I'm just not One sure whether I should actually try to keep this going. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, darling. Go ahead. 
<laughs> I'm just not sure if I should stay with him. That's all. Darling, it sounds like you're a perfect match. White trash from the Midwest. Moving to Temecula, one of the yeah. West Coast capitals of, of white trash. And wine, by the way. <laughs> and uh, there he is. He's 20. He's already got an ex-girlfriend's name inked on his back. And he's a Coke user. Sounds like the, the love of your life, dear. I think you should have babies with him and everything. You just have a trailer full of kids. Uh, pretty soon you'll know uh, the address of the uh, welfare office, and you'll be marching over there for help. If you haven't already. What do you do for a living, sweetie? Huh? What do you do for a living? Actually, I go to school. My mom is supporting me right now, and I'm looking for a job and hoping to move out probably around February. So you're going to high school? Yes. But you're 18. Yes. Why are you still in high school? I started kindergarten very late. My mom held me out because I had a very low maturity level when I was young. Some I, things never changed here. Huh? Some things never change. <laughs> I guess you've got that right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, seriously, I, I'm, 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 I'm telling you about the white trash thing. It is true, right? I consider myself white trash. No, my Come mom's on. a nurse. She's got a very, she's pretty wealthy. She's got Your mom is money. wealthy? How much is a lot of money, Doc? Um, well, I believe she's got about 200000 at least in the bank. Wow. Wealthy? And she, well, I'm not saying she's like a millionaire. Well, she's not. She's so one she's fifth, well she's one fifth of a millionaire. Yeah, she's well off, though. I mean, she doesn't mm. worry about money. She's bought, we've bought three cars in the past two years, complete cash. Her house is paid off. All right. And uh, the university you're planning on attending, darling? Ohio State University. Ohio State University. And when do you plan to do that? I'm uh, planning on attending next fall. I apply this year. You apply this year. So you got to finish high school in Temecula. Yes. And then you're going to go back to Ohio to go to college. Yes. All right. And uh, your man, uh, what university is he attending in Ohio? He doesn't... Bonham, Bonham Young? participating in college education. Right, because he's a moron. <laughs> he's, he, he's a coke-abusing moron with his ex-girlfriend's name inked on his back. And, that's, and what does that tell us about you, that you would find love looking at that? I didn't know all of it when I first met him. I knew him for about four months before we started dating, and both of our birthdays are in February. They're about three days apart. I knew on his birthday he had used it. Um, I actually do have a coke addict in my family. And oh, there you go. You know, They'll, you'll get along great. And that's, well, actually, that's kind of the reason I didn't want him doing it, was because I don't want that in my life. Darling, you it. can't control what other people do. True. True. You hooked up with a coke feed. My yeah, therapist, okay. I, by the way, I've been in therapy for eight years, okay? And my therapist will be the first to tell you that no matter what you say, you can try to deny it. You hooked up with a coke fiend because that's what you're used to. You're comfortable with being around people like that because you got them in your family. I have one in my family. Doesn't actually. matter. You probably got boozers, too. No. Pot no. smokers? No, not in my family. No. no chronic weed smokers in your family? No. Really? Just a bunch of good church-going Ohioans. Well, they don't go to church, but <laughs> they're not bad people. They don't use drugs. Right. Well, darling, so the question is not what you can do about it. The question is, are you going to stay with a coke fiend with his ex-girlfriend's name inked on his back? I guess you're right. Because I that's what you. he is. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Well, you didn't answer the question. Are you going to stay with it? Um, You're not you know, sure. You know, yeah, it's amazing. I gave you all the facts. I, I, I crystallized this for you. Yes. And after all of that, you're still not sure because you're in love. I, you know, I do question whether I'm in love with him. I do. I really do care about him. I want the best for him. I go out of my way to help him. That's Everybody not your job. How about the best for you? 
Oh, gosh. I just don't know, like, what, actually, what my honest, like, question is, is will he change? Like, will something be different? No. You know? No. <laughs> what are you laughing about? No. The answer is no. Oh, gosh. This is who he is. You're right. It's just, I'm, it's hard for me to just get up and leave, because he came out here and left so much, and he can't go back. Done. So stop being an attention whore and trying to eat up all the time on the radio and take my advice. Be okay. done with him and move on. Okay. I will do so. Oh, you're killing me, Larry. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to uh, Darren on the Tom Liga Show. Darren, listening to our online stream, or is he listening to podcasts? Actually, Tom, hello. It's great to speak to you. I'm listening to a podcast. I see. Uh, in Wichita. Out of Wichita. I um, I travel all the time. And I just called the show tonight to say thanks. I'm, I've got about four more hours in the car. And I, I download your stuff. Every week I'm going to travel into my iPod. And I listen to it solid. It, it's a great service you provide by giving that to your listeners for free. Well, we do it as a public service, as you know. You, you do, and it's, and it's great. And I know there's some other hosts out there that want to charge for their backstage pass deal where they can get the shows. But Well, that's because you know, nobody pays to advertise on their radio shows. It's the only way right, they make any money. Absolutely. Now, frequently that includes people who claim to have retired from the radio business and actually hadn't. They just couldn't find a job. The Tom Likas Show.